What's the best way to write exactly what's being said? Hello, welcome to Light Linguistics. This is the International Phonetic Alphabet, a chart that contains every sound in human language. You might recognize some of these characters, like n or s or o. With others, you might not recognize the letter, but you know the sound, like v or sh. And even still, there's a lot that we don't have in English, like brr or rah. But this is how linguists can write down exact sounds. It's widely used throughout linguistics and is really common on Wikipedia pronunciation guides. So if you can read this, you can pronounce just about anything. This week, we'll be going into the terminology behind all this and how to pronounce it all. We're going to start with these consonants and then we'll get into these vowels. If this isn't your cup of tea, check the link in my bio to vote for next week's topic for something different. And if this intrigues you, then stick around and like and follow for more language. Let's talk about consonants. Hello, welcome to Light Linguistics. This is a chart of just about every consonant the human mouth can produce. It's part of the International Phonetic Alphabet, which is what linguists use to transcribe sounds. This grid has two parts to it, where the sound is produced and how the sound is produced. This is known as place and manner of articulation. Place starts at the front of the mouth and goes to the back of the mouth. And manner goes from most airflow to least airflow. Here at the top you have stops, which is where air stops completely to make the sound. This is sounds like pa, ta, and ka. Then we have nasals like m mm or n. Mm. We don't really have these trills in English, but they have it in Spanish like ra. Keep on going down to fricatives and you get to where there's a continuous airflow. This is sounds like f, s, sh, or h. Come back tomorrow for more of a dive and like and follow for more language. So let's talk about consonants, part two. Hello, welcome to Light Linguistics. If you remember from yesterday, this chart shows just about every consonant the human mouth can make according to the International Phonetic Alphabet. This top axis describes where the sound is produced in your mouth and this side describes how it's produced, also known as place and manner of articulation. And since the IPA is based primarily on Latin characters, a lot of the letters look familiar. For example, you can see this S, Z, T, D, P, B, and those make the sounds you'd probably think they'd make. There's some in here you might not recognize, but you can figure them out based on what you know. For example, we know that the further back you go in this chart, the further back it is in your mouth. For an example of this, let's look at this S, Z. If you take the S sound, and slide it a little further back in your mouth, you go sh to sh, which is what this letter is. And if you do the opposite, take that S and slide it forward a little bit, you get theta or th. Little reference points like this are very handy in learning this. And this can also work going up and down the chart. For example, if you take the shape of the P, but hold it like an S, you get and if you watch my lips, you can see that it's different from F. It's f, not f. K is another good one for this. If you take that K and then hold it, you get k. If you take this K, which is a velar stop, and articulate it like an S, which is a fricative, you get k, which is a velar fricative. And if you take that K and move it further back in your mouth, you get Ka. And further forward, you get ka. We don't have these sounds in English, so it's hard for us to hear a difference, but there is one. And the more you do this, the better sense you have of where your tongue is in your mouth, and you can feel it out better. Sometimes, though, this chart can be a little bit deceiving. You need to keep your eye out for this trilled ra. It's the most common R sound across languages, so it's given the default R. However, the English R that we're used to is actually that upside down R right here. Another thing this chart shows is voicing contrasts. For example, the only difference between S and Z is that your vocal cords are moving. If you put your hand on your throat and go you'll only feel it moving on the Zs. So in this chart, when there's two characters in a box, the one on the left is a voiceless, like S, and the one on the right is voiced, like Z. Sorry I wasn't able to go into every single sound on this individually, but I hope this gives you a good reference to start learning this. It's a really fun tool, and it's really fun to practice sounds in public. Thanks for sticking around all the way to the end, and like and follow for more language. So let's talk about vowels. Hello, welcome to Light Linguistics. Vowels, like many things, exist on a spectrum. 
And here is a chart of the vowels in the International Phonetic Alphabet. As you can see, there's a lot. This area, known as the vowel space, has two main dimensions. These two dimensions, high to low and front to back, correspond to areas in your mouth. To give you a feel for it, let's start with the corners. This front high vowel is pronounced E. It looks like the letter I, but in Latin, that letter was pronounced E, so that's the sound it produces on this chart. If we go to a high back vowel, we get OO. A low back vowel is AH. And a low front vowel is A. Ah. You should be able to feel a difference in tension between the high and low vowels. But we say that vowels are on a spectrum because you can slide through them more easily. You can go ew and hit everything on that top line. Come back tomorrow for a deeper dive. It's time to boldly go into vowel space. Hello, welcome to Light Linguistics. Here is a map of vowel space. Vowels are defined as having a nearly unrestricted airflow compared to consonants which restrict the airflow. And since there's no real restriction, the sound of the vowel is determined by the shape of your mouth when it's being made. Any little nuance in your mouth can make a completely different vowel. This chart arranges vowels based on the location of your tongue when making it, and the location of your tongue determines the shape of your mouth. It goes front of your mouth to back of your mouth and high to low. The other major component of this is rounding. This is whether your lips are rounded or not during the vowel. For example, compare the shape of your lips in E or A versus U or O. Now for some demonstrations. First, let's look at the front vowels from high to low. There's E, I, E, E, A, A. Those are all unrounded vowels. English doesn't really have the rounded version of these vowels except in certain accents. But French and Scandinavian languages do tend to have them. So if you're a Swede, please correct my pronunciation of E, I, E, E, A. In the middle here, we have the central vowels. It's worth pointing out that basically no language distinguishes these six middle vowels, but it's important to be able to write them in academic settings. These six all sound something like the uh in about. And then here along the back vowels, let's start with the rounded ones. We have oo, o, a, and ah. The rounded version of these back vowels is much more common than the unrounded version. Basically, rounding makes things sound further back. So, front vowels are less likely to be rounded, and back vowels are more likely to be rounded. And for the unrounded vowels, here's my attempt. Oo, o, a, a. And this one is uh, like book. And you may notice that this chart slants towards the bottom. This is because there are limitations to your tongue's position, and a low vowel can't be as far forward as a high vowel. And eventually, it gets hard to distinguish some of these lowest vowels. And a fun thing about vowel space is that it's very fluid. For example, English has a lot of vowels that are diphthongs, which is two vowels put together, like I. So what you know is the vowel I actually starts here, ah, and goes up to E, I. There's also O as another diphthong. There's also A starts at A, goes up to E. These vowels aren't as strictly defined in specific regions as consonants. For example, Spanish doesn't distinguish between E and I, so really their vowel comes somewhere between this. Thanks for sticking around. I hope you found this interesting. You can vote on next week's topic in my bio and like and follow for more language.